with uh, uh, about a $130 million deficit as to what our own contractors tell us we ought to have to to uh, to do the work. And we just tell them we can't have them. I had a group out in California this week with uh, North America. And uh, the, the problem I've got, Mr. President. Go ahead. Sir? Go ahead. I just the somebody. problem I've got is that that in order to get on with the work and to to get it done cheaper, uh, we have stepped up this flight schedule, and we're headed right for the flying with the Apollo, and this has produced uh, all the problems you get with something that's about four or five times as complicated as the Gemini. And as you know, when Congress made that big slash of $600 million in one year, we went to all of systems tests. So I'm headed now for about the hardest thing that anybody ever undertook to do, and that is to fly these big boosters. We've got one off, the Saturn 1B. We've got now coming up uh, two more flights and then men on the fourth flight. Uh, and uh, everything on that booster that flew that first flight had not flown. First stage, second stage, and the, and the payload. Uh, now, you see, it's awful hard to, uh, to, uh, to do much more than I have done and to be faced with that kind of a terrific responsibility to take that big rocket, which is the biggest thing anybody's ever done, anything with it, including the Russians up to now. I, I mean, I'm not trying to, uh, to uh, in any sense, say to you that I'm a defeatist, but uh, I, do, I do want you to know that I have really put my mind on doing everything in this direction I could. You remember you asked me if this once in the cabinet room. Man. Yeah, I know that. And, uh, and I, I really have worked at it, and I'm in a... I, uh, the reason that I haven't come back to see you after that time is that uh, uh, although I needed help, I didn't know how you could give it to me with all your problems. And in a sense, uh, what I've got here is a, is, a, is a situation where when I get through the Congress, I've been up with Margaret Chase Smith late this afternoon, Clint Anderson this morning, uh, we're going to be facing for this year, and I've got, this is something I have told nobody uh, outside the agency and nobody in it except Siemens and I and one other man know it. I've got a request on my desk right now for $207 million uh, in the man's space for a supplemental from George Miller with a statement that he is not sure he can can hold this thing or hold our organization together without it. Now, I'm, I'm just trying to show you that uh, if your budget people uh, tell you I'm a big spender, I'm, I'm really no, doing no, more no. work for the dollars than, than you might imagine. No, nobody's talking about... Uh about uh, you being a big spender. What we're talking about is what we budgeted, what we planned, what we estimated our expenditures would be. Right. Now, uh, there are two people that are, uh, they're, they're, the efficiency, the results they're getting, the deliveries are far ahead of what we guessed. One of them's McNamara, 700 million last month. And you, for the year, are going to be about $600 million. Now, that knocks the living hell out of me. Which, on the other hand, I told the budget director at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I, yeah. Gave, I, gave I, think right. I think that's right. I think that's right. I think I think I think that's right. I think that's right. I think he's told me that. Yeah. I think he's told me that. Now, then, uh, it's not a question of who's right or who's that's wrong. Right. The big question is, what do we do when we got these overruns of our estimate? Now... Uh, you won't, won't even won't bother you a bit. But if you get 51 men defeated and they take control and they spend all the next two years investigating, well, we wish we could have spent a little time just trying to figure out what we could do. Now, what I'm hoping is that uh, uh, what I buy in June uh, comes due, uh, what I could buy in May, uh, down here at my uh, roll of haberdashery and my Safeway grocery store and my uh, uh, Ford place. They send me a bill. They get this bill up about uh, June the 5th and they mail it to me and tell me that I'll get a discount if I pay it by the 10th and uh, so forth. Now, I just may not get around to that till July the 1st. We are, we, are, we, are, we are working in this direction. Now, all I want to do is do as much as I can, and that's all a mule can do. And uh, while uh, you are going to run more than they estimated, six, seven hundred million dollars, 
they think you could save 60 or 70 that you are doing and that they, they, you, you're ace high on their list. McNamara is hoping he can find a way to get his postponed over in where he just doesn't meet them all because he writes his own checks where he can uh, hold a little bit, not overrun. Freeman is going to come in under, and if uh, if we can uh, do a little uh, praying, it's conceivable we can keep our expenditures. I don't know, but I noticed uh, Business Week this week estimates that our expenditures will be a billion more than I estimate them. They'll be 107 something instead of 106 something. But my revenues will also be up. And if my revenues are up more than my expenditures are up, I'll still look good and I'll be uh, probably the first president that's had uh, uh, three budgets with a deficit less than he promised or predicted. And my third one will be notwithstanding what we've done in Vietnam. If you could spend several billion more in Vietnam and still have less deficit than you started out with, uh, you're a mighty lucky man, but we've got a lot of increases in revenue, and we've got a lot of gimmicks. I'm, uh, I'm making the big companies send in their withholding three days instead of uh, keeping it working for a few days for them, and that picks me up a little. And, and I've got several one-time things, like my taxes and so forth. And then the con economy is just so damn booming and so prosperous that it's running ahead of our expectations. And we're going to be uh, several billion over what we anticipated on our revenues. But it's so close to being a good picture. In other words, uh, I estimated that uh, that uh, we'd spend 99 something, and we're going to spend 100 and say seven. But I estimated that uh, our revenues would be 94, and hell, they may be 104. That'd be wonderful. 103 too, way up there. But you so what I wanted. What I want to do, then, is to make as good a picture June 30th as I can, for three reasons. One is, if it's a good enough picture, it might dampen a little of this uh, this inflation stuff. They might say, well, hell, the government's taking in damn near as much as it's spending. So that's not too bad. It's not a big deficit at all. Less, less deficit than it was last year. That would help me a little to have that kind of conversation going around the town. The second thing, these 75 young boys that got elected on my coattails, 51% districts, if they could go back and say, hell, you talk about our spending. We fought the war in Vietnam and got less deficit than we had last year when I was elected. I went up there and I got, sure, we spent some more money, had to, on account of Vietnam. If it hadn't been for Vietnam, we'd spent less money. We, uh, we only got 600 million outside of Vietnam over a domestic program over what we had last year. But good God Almighty, we're taking in several billion more in taxes. So that gives them a pretty good record. And then third, I might be able to say, well, fellas, I don't have to, I, I just don't have to have a tax bill. I want to look at it in January. And I might get by that November election without a damn tax bill. Now, what I'm afraid of is I'm afraid I'm going to have to have a tax bill. And I'm afraid if I not on account of revenue, not on account of deficit, on account of the, get some of this purchasing power out, take some of it out. Now, if I could avoid it to January, a fellow in Iowa's got a whole lot better chance running on the Democratic ticket, coming back and saying, I got less deficit and I had the year, you had a Republican in there. And furthermore, I didn't have to vote for taxes. And uh, furthermore, I'm fighting a war in Vietnam and paying for it, and we damn near got a balanced budget. He's in a whole lot better shape than if he goes back home and said, I've got a seven, eight billion dollar deficit, and so on and so forth. Now, the fellows that are going to make the difference is you and Bob McNamara and Oliver Freeman and John Gardner. Now, we haven't told anybody, but we have held back allocations this last quarter between a billion and two billion on new agreements. We've held that little bit out of the fire awarding those contracts that don't save as much in expenditures, but it'll show up down the road. And we're going to try to work on another billion or two of, after July the 1st. And uh, in addition to that, 
Oliver Freeman's going to come in with 839 under what we said. So that'll make up for yours. If I can get McNamara to come close to what he said. And if the gardener just don't go hog wild by making all of his grants, he and Dave Bell, between now and July the 1st, making some of them July the 4th, where they don't draw down and hit me where I have to settle between now and July the 1st. So what I'm saying is this. I'm not questioning your management. I'm not questioning your your uh, your expenditures. I'm not questioning your your uh, objectives or your assignments or your missions or your being on target. I'm glad that all of that's happening. All I'm saying is if you just get off in North Carolina and don't have to sign those checks between now and July the 1st, or you don't pay out every damn thing in the bank and give me a big overdraft, I just assume you have a little surplus even though you got some bills outstanding when you hit that July 1 dead. Now, I don't have to spell it out too clear to you, but I, I, the thing that's got me off is, frankly, the efficient managers I've got. Uh, Gardner's doing a good job, and McNamara's doing a good job, and you're doing a good job. Too damn good a job. You're you know, getting I've your been... contracts lit, and you're getting your stuff delivered, and you're getting your bills, and you're paying them. <laughs> well, you know, uh, what uh, what I'm faced with, Mr. President, I'm going to do everything you ask me to do to the fullest extent that I can. I just assure you that. But here's what I'm faced with. We went up, you see, uh, to uh, a little, about a five and a quarter billion, and we were... We, we were pushing the work out and getting it under contract, and there's a long lead time in this. And then, of course, when we started down, the expenditures of, for work we'd already contracted for, people on the payroll, there are 448,000 people working in this program. And uh, you see, uh, if, if I cut them off right in the front of my flying period, uh, the thing that I was going to have to come and tell you is that under the program for 67, we're going to lose between 50, maybe as many as 80,000 people. Yeah, I knew that. I've been, I said that to press conference, uh, hoping that that would loosen up this economy a little bit. Well, th now, the, the point, though, that, that is facing me is that I don't know that I can hold this organization together and lose 80,000 and still do this flying. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I wouldn't say that casually. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, up to now, I've always told you I could do what had to be done. Right now, I'm in a position where I don't know really if I can do it. Uh, because the forces are, uh, are really uh, in the most, uh, well, I mean, these people have got to fly and put men up there, and uh, it's, uh, it's, awful, it's awfully hard to go to North America and say, we're going to cut you uh, back $130 million under your own estimate of doing the work and demand even more work for $130 million less, and you've got to find a way to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and and you got to meet this flight schedule. You got to fly. Got to fly three men on the nose of the fourth rocket. Now, uh, the thing that you and I have got to face with the greatest of, of care here in terms of your political future, 68 plus the fact that the Russians. Uh, I want to bring you the latest report uh, that the CIA boys have put out. If you haven't seen it, because it confirms everything I told you down at the ranch. So, in a sense. Uh, what we're faced here is, uh, is every visible sign that they're going to be doing something bigger than we're doing. The stuff they're building, you know, is bigger than what we're doing. And uh, when you when you face that, and and uh, I'm uh, uh, easily 250 million under financed on what I'm doing, and I got no backup, and I'm assuming I can succeed on every flight. Uh, and now I could do that except that the word is getting around that maybe you've lost some of your interest in space. Now, I talked to a couple of scientists who said, I don't want to say this, but the president's getting a lot of information, a lot of advice that uh, he should not push this program, he should stay away from it. My boys are beginning, to, I, I'm going to lose the very men that make this thing fly. Uh, unless we... Are you telling me I don't know what you're talking about? No, I haven't, nobody's talked to me that way. Well, I don't know who would know well, what you know they're saying. Things go around. I but, think it's just some propaganda, somebody that uh, that's either uh, uh, got an undue interest or uh, uh, some purpose, because no, nobody's talked to me that way. I haven't, I haven't got anybody. You're the only space advisor I got. I haven't discussed space with Horning or Seaborg or Welsh or... or uh, 
McNamara, or anybody. We haven't had one. The last space discussion I had was with you at the ranch. That's the last one I've had. Well, you see what? And I, I think that I, I rather doubt there's been anybody in the government. But that's the damn trouble. That does make you want to lose it if you, if you folks don't really believe, you see, after all I've done uh, in the space thing. It's some goddamn gossiper standing on the sidelines, don't know anything. It's kind of like Drew Pearson telling about who I'm going to appoint judge in the District of Columbia. I read a big column the other day that I had had Roger Robb. And I said, who is Roger Robb? 